Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Claremont United Church of Christ. It is so good to be here with all of you to worship today. I read a beautiful poem that I want to share with you entitled, A Break. Sometimes I just stare at the flowers. You may be weary. Maybe the world weighs heavy on you. You might feel you don't have a prayer in you. Well, some days your soul doesn't need to work so hard. Souls get tired, sick even. Some days yours just needs a little TLC. Sometimes what our soul needs is not more discipline, but something comforting and nourishing, maybe even something fun. Give your soul a break. When your soul is weary or unwell, do something nice for your soul, even something silly. Feed it with grace at the roots. If that day is not today, it will come. You have permission. We welcome you into this space where we will feed our roots with grace and give our souls permission to take a break and to be nourished. If you're visiting with us today, we invite you before you leave to put your name and contact information in the blue books that are in each pew. We would love a chance just to reach out to you later this week and welcome you and give you a personal hello. As you're leaving today in the narthex, there is a lot out there for you. On this side, you will see a place where if you brought hygiene items or school supplies that we're collecting, you can drop those off. And at that same table is also an opportunity to write letters to our legislators that our Board of Mission and Social Action has put together on behalf of several urgent needs, particularly around uh, immigration and other pertinent issues. On this side, we found a bunch of old t-shirts with our old logo on them. So if you want to pick up some swag on your way out to use those shirts for painting or other projects around the house, please feel free to take one with you. We invite you to do that. Finally, we have something to celebrate that is so incredible. We're going to be celebrating it in two parts because we are just so grateful for a staff member who has been at this church for 30 years years. Dr. Carrie Robertson, would you mind coming to the front? She is very shy, so this is going to be hard for her, I know, but we need to celebrate you, Carrie. This marks 30 years of Dr. Carrie Robertson being organist at this church. Let's give her a round of applause. Dr. Robertson, you are such an incredible gem that this church is so blessed to have. Dr. Robertson puts in so much work, and she is known around the world for her talents on this organ, and she does so much work to shepherd its care, to teach students of the future on this organ, and to be able to have world-class musicians come in and be able to experience this instrument here at Claremont United Church of Christ. We are so grateful for 30 years of service. And the reason why we have to do this in two parts is because we have a few surprises for you today, and we want to let you know what's going on, and then you'll realize why we're going to celebrate you again in a couple of months. John, do you want to tell her what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So because this church is so generous, um, we've decided as a congregation to collaborate with you in the commissioning of a new organ piece that will be dedicated to your service, um, where you get to choose the composer and make sure it's... A, I, <laughs> Make sure it's a piece that you really like. Um, and then, of course, we expect you to premiere it when you're ready. And that will be the second part of the celebration of your 30 years of service to this church. So we're very excited about this opportunity to create more music uh, for a longer future with you. And if you would like to write Carrie a note, there is a little insert in your bulletin, and we would love for you to share favorite memories you have of her or just favorite um, things that you enjoy about her playing the organ here. A, a little note of gratitude would be wonderful, and you can leave these in the narthex on your way out. Um, again, do we have, uh, is Susan? 
Yes, we, we have some flowers for you from Susan Acuff, who um, also is our substitute organist and the head of our organ task force and works closely with Carrie. So again, let's give a round of applause for Carrie and her 30 years of service here. Church, in gratitude for all that has come before and all that will be, will you please join me in our call to worship? We are not perfect, but we worship a perfect God. We are not perfect, but God works with and through our imperfections. We are not perfect, but we are full of grace. We are not perfect, but there is perfection in God's holy plan of redemption. If you are able and interested, please stand me as we sing our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. come before a God who knows every part of us and this morning declares that we are loved. Join me in our prayer of confession. God of the sacred mundane, we confess that so often we become fixated on creating perfection in our lives that we miss the blessings of the imperfect reality all around us. For dismissing relationships, projects, plans, and even our own sense of self that does not measure up to our own impossible standards, forgive us for not seeking and finding you in the midst of our flawed but beautiful lives, forgive us, amen. The Holy One who created us proclaims that we are loved and accepted in our imperfect states of being. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Let us go out and demonstrate the grace we have received from God today. Amen.
Church, may the peace of Christ be with you. We invite you to pass the peace by looking around the sanctuary, connecting someone eye to eye above your mask and giving them a wave. If you're watching online, we invite you to type in the chat a moment where you found peace this week. And we invite all of our young friends to come forward. everyone. I am standing up here behind you for just a minute, and I want to invite two people that you all know very well to come forward. So can we call Teacher Brian and Teacher Katie up for a second? Can everyone say, Teacher Brian? And can we say, Teacher Katie? Brian Frame and Katie Ide have been tirelessly helping our Sunday school program run without a hitch, even through an entire pandemic. And so we have these special gifts to say thank you. I also want to give a special shout out to Jane Gibbons, who is in Maine, but who also made it possible that during the pandemic, we could keep our kids connected so that all of these wonderful young friends could end up here safe and sound. So Brian and Katie, thank you so, thank you so much, much. So for your love and your time here. All right, friends. So who here has started school? Can you raise your hand? <gasps> so many of us have started school. And who is going to start school maybe next week? Anyone going to start school? Yeah, a few of you are going to start school next week. Well, I see so many backpacks here. And I see so many eager faces. And we all want to bless all of you. And we want to bless all of our teachers administrators, professors, custodians, and administrators, and anyone else who helps make school possible. If you fall into one of those categories, we invite you to stand or to open your hands in a posture of receiving this blessing. All right, everyone, are you ready to receive this blessing? Every tall friends, adults out there, I want you to raise your hands in a posture of blessing over our friends, over our teachers and administrators and other educational staff. And I invite us all to be ready for this prayer. Great God of wisdom, be with these people, students, teachers, professors, administrators, custodians. Be with them as they begin a new year of learning, teaching, growing, and serving. May their minds and their pencils be sharp. May your lunches never be forgotten at home. May your erasers remember that it's okay to make mistakes. May your backpacks be blessed, and may they be strong for the job of carrying important books and papers. May their straps never break, may their zippers never jam, and may they never be forgotten in strange places. Bless these masks and the smiles that hide behind them. And when smiles turn to tears, remind all of these people that you are 
along with them in happy times and in hard times. May they be blessed to be a blessing to one another as we all strive to protect the most vulnerable among us and as we search for hope in an aching world. Thank you, God, for glue sticks that hold things together, for folders that help things stay in place, for crisp new notebooks waiting to be filled with ideas, for schools and libraries and teachers and everyone who helps serve you and your gift of wisdom through all the world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, whose teachings make all of us lifelong students. And all God's children said, amen. All right, friends, let's head up to Sunday school where we have a special treat for you. Or you can go sit back with your grown-ups if you'd like. And Sunday school teachers, if you would gather over here, that would be wonderful. We'll see you upstairs. Our ushers will now collect our gifts and offerings. And I want to thank especially our Board of Mission and Social Action this week for making sure that as our students go back to school, that those students who aren't able to afford supplies have what they need. And thank you for the work you're doing to also support the Poor People's Campaign. That's where you'll find more information out there. We're so grateful for the dedication and service of this church to the world. Our offering will be received.
bridge. If love can heal, heal me. If love can save, save me. The way God who blesses us, we pray that you use our resources to bless those in need. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. I've never preached on this text before, mostly because I find the traditional interpretation of this scene to be pretty uninteresting. It goes like this. They say Jesus shows up at Mary and Martha's house, and Martha immediately goes into hostess mode. She's serving food and drink to the Lord and perhaps other disciples who are traveling with him. She then sees her sister Mary sitting at Jesus' feet with the other disciples, listening to his teachings, and asks Jesus to rebuke her sister and tell her to come and help Martha in the kitchen, where, of course, we all assume she's been working because, yeah, because she's a woman. You see why I find this really uninteresting? And in the traditional interpretation, Jesus tells Martha to calm down and be more like Mary, her sister, who has chosen, quote, the better part, sitting quietly at his feet as a student. Eh. 
I don't even have a sister, but I still roll my eyes at the thought of Jesus telling a woman to be more like her sister. It just honestly doesn't even sound that much like him, and I feel like I know the guy pretty well. And the historical takeaway was for Christians, especially women, to make sure to carve out time to study our Bibles instead of getting too busy with the house chores. What? But a few years ago, a theologian named Mary Stromer Hansen offered a new interpretation that I find much more compelling, and I hope you will too. But to really understand the crux of this new translation, we have to dive deep into the text line by line and Greek out together. So bear with me. The first new interpretation Hansen offers is that Martha received Jesus into her home alone. If we look back at verse 38, there's nothing to suggest that Mary was even with her. And it also does not say that Jesus showed up with a pack of disciples for whom Martha suddenly began hosting. Next, in verse 39, instead of understanding it to mean that Mary was currently sitting at Jesus' feet when Martha approached him, in the original Greek, there is a word present that translators have traditionally left out entirely. It's this word, kai, which appears twice in this text, and it means also. Also, Martha had a sister named Mary who also sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. This means that Mary and Martha were both sitters at the Lord's feet, which is not a literal physical description, but a common vernacular of the time, which simply meant that they were both disciples of Jesus. These two sisters were followers of Jesus, and they were both active in their ministry. How do we know this? Because verse 40 has historically been translated this way. Martha was distracted by her many tasks. But in the Greek, it says, but Martha was persepeo by all her diconian. Again, most translations turn persepeo into distracted, but another translation is distressed or greatly troubled by diaconian. Now, throughout the New Testament, the word diaconia means ministry, and this is where we get the word deacon from, someone who serves the church in ministry. Shout out to all of our deacons today. But this could also refer to apostles, disciples, and prophets. And yet in this passage, for some reason, this word is translated not as ministry, but as tasks or preparations. I can't imagine why Historical male translators would read a passage about a stressed out woman greeting Jesus in her home and assume that she was troubled by her tasks and preparations instead of her ministry. Aye, aye, aye. But let's keep going with this new translation. So Martha greets Jesus. She's distressed about all of her ministry duties, and she asks Jesus to send her sister Mary to help her. She cries, Lord, Does it not make you anxious that my sister has katalipo me alone to diakonian? Now this Greek word katalipo means to leave and actually go away physically, abandon or desert to another place. This suggests that perhaps Mary is out with the other disciples. She might be traveling with Jesus from town to town as they teach and heal crowds. And meanwhile, Martha seems to be doing ministry in her home and in her local community. Can you picture Martha ministering to her local poor and homeless, feeding the hungry in her village, praying with all of her neighbors, hosting worship in her home, visiting prisoners, teaching her community's children about God? Of course, she was tired. And she's imagining her sister Mary out gallivanting with the other disciples, visiting interesting new towns, eating someone else's cooking, breathing the fresh air of the Sea of Galilee. So, of course, Martha tells Jesus to send Mary home to help her. Who wouldn't feel a little resentful in their exhaustion when fantasizing about someone else's greener grass? I can tell you during the 10 days when Pastor Jacob was quarantined with COVID, I prayed a prayer that probably sounded a lot like Martha's demand. Lord, send him down those stairs and into the kitchen to unload the dishwasher. (laughs) 
And in typical Jesus fashion, Jesus has a profound divine response to Martha's anxiety. He says her name twice, Martha, Martha. And that pulls her out of her head spiral and back into her own body. And then he says, you are worried and distracted. Although I think a better translation is actually, you are anxious and panicky. You are anxious and panicky about polas, everything. The words used for anxious and panicky are in the Greek imperfect tense, meaning that this is not a one-time event of traditional translations um, offering but an ongoing state of anxiety and distress. And so Jesus is speaking to Martha's ongoing anxieties about all the difficulties of ministry without her sister there by her side. And he says, Mary has chosen this good portion and it will not be taken away from her. Now these two words, ho agathos, translate as this and good. So Mary has not chosen the only good portion or the better portion, as some translations, including the one we read this morning together, say. It's just she has chosen this good portion. And Jesus says, it won't be taken away. This story now becomes a lot much deeper and much more profound than a chastisement of a distraught homemaker. Now it is about Jesus soothing an anxious disciple and reminding her that we are each called to a different type of ministry, and that is okay. It is good. He's telling Martha to let Mary be Mary. She isn't called to the same life that Martha has, and while that is frustrating and perhaps leaves Martha tired and anxious, she must recognize that Mary is also doing good work. I wonder now how many of us can relate to this story in a new way. Perhaps you, like Martha, have watched your sibling or your child or even your spouse develop and grow and be called into ministry in this world in a way that you are not. Perhaps this has caused your loved ones to move far away, to devote more time to traveling than you'd prefer, or even to alter the way that you envisioned your relationship with them. Perhaps you feel left out of their calling to some degree, worry that they are outgrowing you. They've moved on to bigger and better and greener pastures. Maybe you find yourself wishing that they would move home, stay close, travel less. To you, Jesus says, they have chosen this good portion and it won't be taken away. Or maybe you, like Mary, have a career that takes you away from your loved ones more often than you'd like. Traveling, lobbying, protesting, commuting. And at the same time, you find deep meaning in this work. You find it incredibly spiritual and important. But maybe you sometimes feel that you're out of your league, that you're an imposter among talented professionals, that you should just go home and play it safer. And to you, Jesus says, You have chosen this good portion, and it won't be taken away. In this digital era, when social media makes comparing ourselves to one another not only easy but compulsive every time we pick up our smartphones or log on to our computers, this word from Jesus is very important. Let others be themselves. You do you. You're called to use your gifts and talents to glorify God in a unique way that is not going to look or feel the same as even your closest friends, even someone as close to you as your own sister. Yet each of you is given a good portion. The truth is, we need all of your unique ministry and we need you all doing your own unique ministry in this world right now. Whether you're working or retired, Whether you're serving on a board or committee at this church or reading your Bible at home, whether you're active in your career outside the home or inside your home, raising compassionate kids or caring for animals, caring for aging parents, disabled family members, or out in the streets marching for righteous causes, we need you. The world needs you. Thinkers and doers scholars and activists. 
We need those of you who pray for our never-ending prayer list and those of you who volunteer your time to serve the community. We need those of you who have your finger on the pulse of the local community here and those of you who are connected globally to know what God is doing in other parts of this world. It is no accident that in the Gospel of Luke, this story of Martha and Mary is sandwiched between the story of the Good Samaritan and the scene where Jesus goes away to a quiet place to pray and then teaches his disciples what is known as the Lord's Prayer. Being a disciple of Jesus, Luke is explaining, includes both doing and serving and being still. Some of us have chosen one of those portions, and it is good. I also think we can choose different portions in different seasons of our lives. Sometimes we feed our souls and minister to the world by being active, and sometimes we do that by turning inward and connecting with the Spirit through Scripture and contemplation. This sermon marks the very first in our series, Wabi Sabi, which is a traditional Japanese aesthetic centered on the acceptance of transience and imperfection. It's an appreciation of beauty that is imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete in nature. The author Richard Powell, who writes about wabi-sabi, writes this. Wabi-sabi acknowledges three simple realities. Nothing lasts. Nothing is finished, and nothing is perfect. We'll be delving more into this concept in the weeks to come, but I think Martha's conversation with Jesus ends with a good reminder to embrace our unfinished, imperfect realities, to attempt to find beauty and even joy in our daily routines and responsibilities, not to become anxious, or distressed because ministry is indeed a job that is never finished and the life of a disciple of Jesus is not going to be perfect. But may you leave this place today remembering that you are each given a good portion in this life and that will not be taken away. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. God of Martha and Mary and all of us, we come before you realizing that our worries do not get us far down the road of happiness or productivity or peace. And yet we often carry them with us and allow them to weigh us down because the world is a heavy, broken, ever-changing dwelling place. Today we pray that you would allow each of us to be called back into ourselves, to be rooted down into our faith and stabilized by your ancient wisdom. Give us the deep peace that comes only from you, the peace that surpasses all understanding and reminds us that we are loved just as we are, and that despite the countless troubles and challenges of the day, you remain steadfastly by our side guiding us along towards a better future. Today we pray for those of us who, like Mary, are out in the world and making changes and advocating for the vulnerable and working to change the landscape. And we pray for those of us who, like Martha, are overworked, overtired, and deeply fatigued by the endless responsibilities of local ministry in the community and in our homes. Renew us, revitalize us, refresh our spirits with your Holy Spirit. And together we pray these words as one community, saying together, Heavenly Mother, Heavenly Father, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river through us, from each one to each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. through changes everything's happening so fast I'm going through changes don't know how long it's gonna last I've put up a good front so I don't have to admit when I am wrong but it's no longer working I'm ready to deal with it head on. It seems the more I pull away, the more things take and to change. I'm always trying not to run. You're still there holding on well. What if you lift me up on your wings? What if you take me up so high? What if you catch me when I'm falling? There'd be no reason to ask why. It's not about always being right To be in the moment That's when the real work begins If I can be present 
I know I'm not perfect by all means, but I'm willing to let go and trust in you for everything. It seems the more I pull away, the more things take and to change. Things always fall into place when you least expect them to. Well, what if you lift me up on your wings? What if you take me up so high? What if you catch me when I'm falling? There'd be no reason to deny. Do I really want to live a life of golden lies and sweet demise? Or can I hold on to your promises and stand firm on your word? Do I really want to make pretend like everything is always fine? Or can I lean on you for everything? The latter's what I need. What if you lift me up on your wings? What if you take me up so high? What if you catch me when I'm falling? There be no reason to ask why. See, what if you lift me high oh, on your wings, Lord? There'll be no, there'll be no reason. I know I'm safe in your arms, yes. Changes, changes are all right with me if I'm with you. I love that moment when Jesus sees Martha spiraling out of anxiety and stress and he calls her back into her own body at her present moment by saying her name twice. And so the next time that you find yourself anxious or distressed, feeling like you're never gonna get done all of the things you should get done for your ministry, for your home, for your family, I want you to imagine Jesus saying your name twice and calling you back into the present moment and reminding you that each of us is given a good portion in this life and that won't be taken away. Go in peace in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, amen.